Welcome to part 5 of lecture 16 of aeroplane space propulsion. We left off thinking about this question of what do the two different terms within the diffusion factor definition really mean. The first term is essentially a one dimensional deceleration term. This would be the same if we were just dealing with a straight diffuser instead of a blade rope. The second term has to do with the effect of pressure gradients caused by turning the flow. Uh, these can also contribute to the flow separating. Normally we constrain the diffusion factor to be less than about 0.45. For constant radius axial uh, radius flow and constant axial velocity, we can write the diffusion factor in terms of uh, the flow angles, and the diffusion factor um, can, can be expressed as shown here. Um, and sometimes slightly higher diffusion factors are allowed, um, especially in, in fans. An important thing about the diffusion factor to understand is that it is a design point quantity. And talking about the value of the diffusion factor at an off-design operating point is pretty meaningless. Normally we would use the average of velocities, or here those at mid-span, or in general you could calculate the diffusion factor for every streamline, which is sort of beyond the scope of what we want to do in this course. So now let's get into some design guidelines for compressors. Um, there's detailed design guidelines in table 9.2 in the text, um, but some highlights that I haven't already mentioned are that the blade aspect ratio um, is usually between uh, 0.75 and 2.5. I would say that even more commonly it's sort of between 1 and 1.5, and uh, but can be as high as 4 for fans. And uh, the pitch to cord ratio is usually about uh, 0.6 to 1.5. And the blade row inlet Mach numbers uh, typically should be less than 1. Um, at least at mid-span, but typically the relative Mach number at the tip um, for fans in the front few compressor stages will be supersonic. Finally, let's talk a little bit about some 3D effects. So real turbo machinery is highly three-dimensional, not 2D, um, and proper consideration of these 3D effects typically requires a full three-dimensional computational fluid mechanics simulation. The problem is that CFD is an analysis tool, not a design tool. So approximate methods are still needed at the design stage. A common choice is to design for uh, radially uniform stagnation enthalpy rise. Um, if the losses are radially uniform, then this yields a uniform stagnation pressure rise, which is going to help give you nice, uh, good flow behavior. But there are real in real machines, there are losses, and the losses tend not to be uniform radially. So the work input distribution is often corrected to account for the losses. About half of the total loss happens near the end walls, the hub and the casing. And you can also have even higher loss uh, near the tip in uh, high relative Mach number regions. So in compressors, we often have higher input in these high loss regions at the hub and the tip to be able to achieve a roughly uniform spanwise stagnation pressure rise. And that's important in order to help maintain a uh, uniform axial velocity across the span, um, which is typically what we're designing for. Here in this course, though, we're just going to consider a radially uniform uh, stagnation enthalpy rise with blade speed u being proportional to the radius. Uh, we and if we want our increase in stagnation enthalpy to be a constant along the span, uh, our loading coefficient therefore becomes inversely proportional to the radius squared. Um, and since uh, from the lower work equation, delta H naught is mu delta V theta, what we get is R times delta V theta is a constant. R times delta V theta is a constant is the equation of a free vortex. And so this is called a free vortex blade design. In general, this isn't really done exactly, but it provides a good starting point for design. Um, and the free vortex design has the advantage that again, if the losses are radially uniform, then so is the axial velocity. Um, so we, you know, th there are a lot of uh, reasons to do this from a simplicity perspective, and typically small tweaks will be made to this to get that radially uniform stagnation pressure rise in order to maintain that uniformity of the axial velocity. 